welcome back to The Artful Chef. Hello everyone and welcome. Today I am at Huntington High School. Alright, today I am at the art department and, you know, I have this channel called The Artful Chef and, you know, a lot of people are like, why? Well, The Artful Chef is because my wife is an art teacher, so that's why today I'm at Huntington High School. Right. So, excited to be here and what we're doing is uh, kind of a unique thing. So, I'm going to create a dish and that is also for you, Mr. Customer. Um, for you, maybe as a fall kind of menu item for you, okay? So, uh, we're creating this and the students are going to draw or create some kind of art that resembles the dish that I make. We're gonna judge that and one of those is going to hang in front of our um, kitchen at Cisco, all right? So, one of the students that I have with me today is, what's your name? Yes. Say again? Vera West. Vera West, okay, Miss Vera. What are you working on in art right now? We're still alive. Still alive, okay. And is that the artwork that you have with you that you're working on? Can we see it? All right, so you're drawing like something that's sitting on the table kind of thing. All right, awesome. So how do you like art class? I like, well, I love it. You love it? All right. So you're gonna be able to win this challenge? <laughs> cool. I want you to set that down and we're going to start this whole little dish right here. So what we're going to do today is we are working with a product called gnocchi. You know what gnocchi is? So gnocchi is a, a potato pasta dumpling. This is imported from Italy. Um, this goes along with our Italian essentials line of product that we just started. So if you want to do a nice special at your restaurant or you're looking to getting into Italian food, we have a bunch of different options for you and this is just one of them, all right? So, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to pan fry some gnocchi, all right? So, gnocchi, which is kind of cool, you can take it right out of this package, okay? And it only needs to cook for two minutes, all right? It's a very soft, easy pasta. So we're gonna let that drain for a second. Don't let me burn you. Um, and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with a little bit of onion in the pan kind of get this going, okay? So onion, a little bit of gnocchi, all right? And then we have some bacon. So this is this is ground bacon. What I did, so if you're gonna use bacon in a dish, you don't need to use the most expensive bacon. So we have bacon ends and pieces, which is a really cool, um, inexpensive way to use bacon. And basically, I just threw this in the oven, okay? Throw in the oven, let it cook down so it looks like bacon, and then throw in the food processor and grind it up. Then you can have it on the line and use it as you're making your, your dish. Smell good? <laughs> and who doesn't like bacon, right? So next we're gonna take some Brussels sprouts. So this is kind of fall themed. It's got that, that rustic kind of uh, feeling to it, okay? And you know, in the fall, we always eat like heartier stuff, right? Do you have a fall favorite food that you like? Turkey. Turkey, there you go. There you go, that makes sense. We're coming around the holidays. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna add this gnocchi to the pan. We're gonna let this simmer and cook a little bit. We're trying to get, you know, I'm doing this on a, on a little burner here, okay? But at your restaurant, this will go a lot faster. Uh, you have a lot more heat available and you get a little bit more color on uh, on the gnocchi. So you actually want to brown it just a little bit, okay? Good deal. Um, so, these are awesome to plate in. You get uh, uh, a real nice uh, look to it. And you know, we eat with our eyes, right? So, with that being said, you want to always plate your stuff so it looks it's got that look to it, okay? You know, you, I wish you could smell this. It's a really good 
uh, fragrant, aromatic kind of smell to it. The next thing we're going to use is a little bit of thyme, okay? Thyme and fall really work great together. And so we are going to sprinkle a little bit of thyme on here. And one thing I wanted to tell you, if you are currently buying um, Cisco spices, okay? As long as you're buying four or more different spices, I can get you a free rack to hang on your wall that these guys fit into, all right? So get with your Cisco sales consultant and we can get you a couple of free racks um, to help organize your kitchen better. I use a lot of spices, so I have these things everywhere in my kitchen and it's real important to have that, um, that organization. So what do we think color was? We're missing something maybe? How about this? There you go. So, this is just about finished, okay? But we can blister a little bit of uh, cherry tomato in here that splits and gives it that little extra pop and a little extra flavor going on, okay? There we go. We don't want to overcook and make like a mushy tomato. We just want it to be bright and, and uh, colorful for us, okay? What do you think? So we should play it? Would you buy it? Maybe? <laughs> Say yes for the can. <laughs> there we go. Good deal. All right. So here you go, a little fall dish for you. Clean it up. So here you go, pan fried gnocchi with Brussels sprouts and cherry tomato and bacon of course. <laughs>
Mm -hmm. And what we did here was we rubbed it and marinated it overnight, okay, in a special rub. And this rub is called a shoulder rub from uh, Spiceology. So if you've ever heard of Spiceology, uh, they have a lot of different uh, spice blends that you can find on our supplies on the fly. So you've heard maybe your sales consultant talk to you about supplies on the fly, free equipment and things like that. But there's also a bunch of different uh, things on there as well. So different food things. Spiceology is one of them. They have a cool blend for everything. So if you want to kind of kick it up a notch in your restaurant and get some different cool flavors, that I would definitely say to go for it and check out supplies on the fly. Make sure you're set up. Talk to your, your Cisco sales consultant. They will help you get set up and on to supplies on the fly. Anyway, enough of that. So what's kind of cool is we, um, we pre-roasted this in the oven. So this is already done, and we made sure that we cooked it just perfectly, okay? And now when you get an order, all you're really doing is warming up this chicken, okay? And you're cooking some mushrooms, and then I have another thing for you that can also be made ahead of time, all right? This is Israeli couscous, okay? Couscous. You ever heard of couscous? Mm -hmm. All right. It's really couscous. It's really kind of a pasta. Okay. And it's a different shape. They're little balls, right? And you cook it in chicken broth with a little bit of butter or whatever kind of broth that you really want to, to cook it in to give it some extra flavor. So now this is where you get creative, okay? So we're going to turn that out in there. It almost, almost looks like rice, but it's pasta. Okay. You know? Then we're going to take some mushrooms, pop off some really nice mushrooms on there. Okay. And we have a really cool, unique flavored chicken. Not just your normal chicken, guys. Special chicken. All right. Yeah, special chicken. It's got a little spice. And this uh, shoulder rub, rub from uh, Spiceology has orange in it. So it's giving it a little bit of an orange uh, taste to it as well. You notice I took the chicken thighs and I cut them. Okay, so I have a big chunky pieces and some really pretty pieces on there. All right, so this looks good, but we're talking about art, right, today? So we need a little artist touch to it, don't we? Yeah. So how, the color, right? Mm-hmm. How about, how about this? These are edible orchid, orchids. So I know some of you customers use these from time to time, but these are a cool way uh, to spice up the dish and make it just look really pretty all right uh, these can be ordered from us as well they do last really a long time in the fridge uh, as long as you keep them in their happy little box and i just tell people to keep it in your happy little box okay and pull out as you need it great for garnishing they are edible and they look like art All right, for this next dish, we are gonna cook some gluten-free tortellini. But before we do that, I have a very special art student with me. <laughs> what, what, tell us, what is your name? Layla. Layla, okay. Layla, tell me a little bit about what you are working on in uh, art class right now. So in my art class, we are doing, we have topics that we're doing for the college board. My topic is body dysmorphic disorders. So for my first piece, I'm basically doing a picture that I've titled Trapped in Your Thoughts. And with Trapped in Your Thoughts, you have a picture of the bottom half of a girl's face where she's smiling. And the top half, she's basically in a cage, cuddled up thinking or um, talking about herself or trying to figure out what she like what's wrong with her. So So I you're kind of telling a story through art, right? Yeah. Alright, and what do you have what do you have drawn so far? So this is what this is my sketch. This is what I have so far. So Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint, I'm gonna, I'm not painting, um, I have a chalkboard that I'm going to draw this part of bottom half with, and for the top half, I'm going to use silhouette and I'm gonna make, uh, I'm gonna make the cage and then I'm gonna put this on top of it and take my picture. Very cool. Can't wait to see the, the end result. Sure. <laughs> All right, well, food is kind of like art as well. 
All right. And so, you know, in some of these other dishes that we've done so far, we've talked a little bit about that. And what these guys are going to do is they're actually going to draw a picture of the food that I'm making today. And their pictures will be hanging in front of my kitchen uh, within the next couple of weeks. So if you're coming by to visit me and, and work with me, you'll be able to see that. Um, excellent. So let's start off. So first thing, we have a new product called gluten-free tortellini. What is gluten? Gluten is wheat, okay? And some people are allergic to it or some people just don't want to have a lot of gluten in their body, okay? So this is an alternative to that. Um, but I'm gonna be honest with you, you can't tell that it's gluten-free at all. It just tastes like a normal tortellini. Unbelievable. Really, really good stuff. So uh, this is pre-cooked, does come frozen, and we're just gonna throw it in our boiling water and let it cook. And then um, we have started selling a lot of Italian essential items. So if you're an Italian restaurant or you want to do a nice profitable uh, Italian dish in your restaurant, we have the products for you. And this is definitely one of them. Uh, Di Napoli um, San Marzano style tomatoes. San Marzano style tomatoes are awesome. So ahead of time, I've taken this in a pot um, with a little onion, a little garlic, a little extra basil and cooked it down. And uh, then we puree it and turn it into an awesome little sauce right here. Okay, so this is, uh, and, and I've added a little bit of uh, cayenne pepper to it so, to make an aviata sauce, okay? So an aviata is just kind of a spicy marinara. So we're just gonna heat this up. All right, heat this up. And then we're gonna take our tortellini. We're just gonna toss our tortellini in this. Okay. Look how fast and simple that is, right? Let this sit. And then we're gonna take some awesome uh, onion. We're gonna saute some onion and some spinach, okay? Now, you know, when you work with spinach, you just want to wilt it really quickly. You don't need to cook the heck out of it. You see how much spinach is going to make for just a little bit on the plate. All right, so we're going to cook that. And then presentation is everything, right? It's going to look good. So we don't want, we don't want ugly food. We eat with our eyes. So that is something that I always help uh, our restaurants with restaurants in this area and uh, all through Texas and uh, we work together with, with owners of these restaurants to really um, brighten up their food to make people happy right so we're going to put this in here you see how fast this is all right and that spinach is almost done can you believe that so we do need to uh, season the spinach so we're just gonna hit it with a little bit of sea salt and a little bit of black pepper in there to kind of get those flavors going. All right, set that over here. Then we're gonna take the same tomato sauce with a little bit of heavy cream, Wholesome Farms heavy cream. We're gonna let that cook so we get a different color on here as well. I'm gonna spread this out a little bit. We're gonna take our, our spinach and we're gonna kind of wrap it around here. Okay. See those colors? Now, what was the name of the school again? Arlington High School. <laughs> Good. That was good. I had to liven it up a little bit. I thought I sometimes listen to myself and like. <laughs> Alright. It smells good. Alright. Good. Alright, then I have meatballs. So in our new line of Italian essentials, we have some of the most awesome meatballs. These are Fontanini meatballs. Um, some of the best flavor. They're fully cooked, they come in different sizes. This happens to be a three ounce. Um, they come in different sizes, so whatever you want to do, if you want to do like a meatball hoagie, 
where you want to do a, a traditional spaghetti and meatballs, but actually have the meatball taste good and not have a lot of work into it. Um, these are, it doesn't get any better than this, okay? So as you can see this, we've reduced the, uh, the cream here. So we're getting kind of a thicker little sauce and we're gonna just have a little bit of contrasting color on top and that will give us that kind of eye pop we want. Ooh. <laughs> that looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. So here we have gluten-free tortellini with a meatball. All right, for this next dish, for your restaurant, we are gonna do a salad. And we're gonna be using a new product that we have. This is a pre-breaded coconut shrimp. And yes, you can serve this hot if you want, but we're gonna use it in a cold application today. But before that, today I'm at Huntington High School. <laughs> All right. <laughs> good, so we got a live audience here today. That was very loud, guys, you did good. Um, <laughs> and I am here today with Mr. Keith. Wait. Oh, that's your name too. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm here with Mr. Keith, and uh, Keith, tell us about exactly what are you doing in art right now? Well, in art, um, we work on texture and um, and shading things of that nature, and just blending it, making sure everything look, just looks real good. So that that's a that's a real fundamental, right? Yeah. So let, let's see what art you've produced here. Needs oh. noodles. That's cool. I do noodles because I like them. Love ramen noodles for sure. And I don't know if you can see it up close. I'm going to bring this closer to the camera. You can see it up close. You have this raised part right here. So it kind of makes it pop out. I think that's awesome. So let's make a salad that pops out too. Let's pop this out. All right. <laughs> so some of the products that we're going to be using here today, I'm going to kind of go over that a little bit. This is called our tender greens, okay? This is a salad blend. And what's unique about this is Tender greens are an older lettuce leaf, okay? So we always think that the freshest is the best, except it doesn't last as long, okay? So these are more mature leaves. They will hold up a long time in your fridge. So if you're a restaurant and you're getting tired of throwing away spring mix, this is definitely something to go to. Um, spring mix contains uh, spinach, and spinach is great, except when spinach is mixed with lettuce, it makes it go bad really, really fast. So I always tell people, if you want spinach in your salad, why don't you buy uh, it separately, keep it separated, all right? So that little bag just turned into a whole gigantic bowl of salad. You see that? Yeah. So let me ask you this. If you're a restaurant, okay, and you're serving salad, don't you want to serve a nice big salad, right, like that? No. Uh -huh. Now, if you're using iceberg, okay, it's going to cost you twice as much to fill that plate with iceberg lettuce as it would if you're using this because of the way this just fluffs right up. You see that? So kind of a little restaurant trick, so to speak, but it also appeals to the eye, okay? So that's the salad mix that we're going to be using. We're also going to use this blend right here. So this is a roasted corn blend, all right? It comes frozen. But you can thaw it out and use it cold too. It's already pre-seasoned. Also makes a good hot side, of course. All right, and then we're gonna use a little bit of, you know what this is? Kale. No. <laughs> it, this is a little um, lettuce head that's called Boston leaf, okay? Yeah. Uh, this is just, I mean, it looks like a flower, right? Yeah. So that, to me, that's like art too, you know? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pop the, the core, core on this. Just kind of cut that around, right? Bam. We're going to use these leaves. Poke them out. And we're going to stick them on here. Right. We got to do this art thing here. Presentation. Presentation. That's right. It's all about that. Now I'm going to use a little bit of lettuce in the middle. So it's almost like we're creating a flower here. See that? Yeah, I see it. All right, so we're gonna bring this to life here. Put a little cucumber around here. Okay. Nice, pretty cucumber. We gotta get a red in there. 
I mean, that's not... so, so here we go. You got it. Okay. I love shredded carrot because shredded carrot just kind of brings it up. Kind of brings it. Good for your eyes. Good for your eyes. <laughs> Very good. All right. I'm going to take this corn blend. And this is going to add something unique to it as well. See that? Right, guys. Some of you are thinking about how you're going to draw this. <laughs> a lot going on here. A lot going on. That's it. So then we're going to take a little bit of green onion. Okay. We're going to take this green onion. Get it to the right size. I'm going to stick this like this. See that? Now if someone brings you a salad that kind of looks like that. Hmm. Now you're getting somewhere. This is starting to look like your picture almost. <laughs> I'm gonna put some shrimp over here. And then of course you can choose whatever, um, you know, whatever dressing that you're looking for. Um, I happen to have right here, this product, which is a Southwest uh, lime uh, vinaigrette. So then you can just kind of pour over here. All right, now you got a coconut shrimp salad with uh, butter leaf, tender greens, uh, roasted corn, tomato, cucumbers, coconut <coughs> shrimp, green onions, bam, you got it all. How much do you think you can sell this for? 39, <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I wish. <laughs> this is probably um, on the low end, I would say $9.99. On the high end, you're probably around the $13.99 salad and this will not disappoint. Enjoy. Amazing. <laughs>
what can I, what kind of quiche mix do you have? Well, let me tell you, first of all, quiche mix is not brain surgery, all right? All it is is two parts eggs to one part half and half, all right? But if you're like, my people can't do that, or I need something simpler, simple scrambled egg mix in the carton works great. What's really unique about it is it also has, uh, has citric acid in it. So what does citric acid do in eggs? Do you have any clue? Um, doesn't it dissolve? Interesting. So, so you have different different ideas on it. And really, what it does. Have you ever had green eggs? Have you ever seen green eggs? Yeah. Like you let them sit forever. If you add citric citric acid to eggs, they won't turn green. So, what that means is I can make quiche today and serve it tomorrow, the next day, or the day after if I have to. Of course, we want to keep as fresh as possible. But if you have some that carries over from day one to day two or to day three you can still use it because it's not going to turn green and be on nasty, okay? So real simple, all we're going to do is we are going to take uh, a little bit of asparagus, okay? I think asparagus and quiche is great. A lot of people do spinach. You can add a protein if you want. And then we have some of this grated Fontal cheese, okay? Uh, this rind does need to come off of this. This is part of European Imports line of product. You hear our uh, sales consultants talk a lot about European imports, and this is one of uh, one of the cool cheeses that we have for that. Of course, we have everything you can imagine as far as cheese, but this one's a great melting cheese. Uh, has a really good kind of medium kind of flavor to it. So I'm just going to add some of that. All right, quiche is hard, right? Real hard. Ready? That's it. That's it. So now it's going to go in the oven. Um, you're going to bake these off. It's going to take about 25 to 30 minutes. I like to cook it at 325 so it doesn't get too brown on top. And that's what that's really all we have to do to cook it. And of course, we already have some done. <laughs> all right, so there we go. There's some, some quiche ready to roll. And then when it comes out, I love to top with just a little bit more cheese. Okay, just get a little bit more flavor in there. That's it. All right, so that goes on our plate. Um, you can reheat this. So you can bake these off in the morning and then as you get an order, you can either can nuke it or you can throw it back in the oven just for a little bit and you will have a, a, a really easy quiche. So the next thing I have here, this is Cisco Imperial Hollandaise Sauce Mix, okay? So Hollandaise is an emulsion sauce. Uh, it does take a little bit of uh, knowledge on how to make Hollandaise from from scratch and I'd be happy to teach you that. If you wanna uh, book some time with me, get with your Cisco sales consultant, I can teach you to make restaurant holidays um, that will last from, from scratch. But if you don't wanna do all that and you want a mix that doesn't taste like the Nor mix, which is just horrible, okay? Which tastes like chicken base mix with something weird. Um, we have this Cisco Imperial mix now. This product came to me, they're like, you gotta try it, you gotta try it. It sat in, at my house literally for a month, okay? And I did try it, I thought it was gonna be really nasty because I like to make it from scratch, okay? And then I tried it and I was like, okay, wait a second. There's something to this. Um, so this is really easy. You're just adding water, you're gonna add butter, okay? And can you grab me that carton right there, that red carton? That's actually water. <laughs> so I poured a little water in this carton here. So you're gonna add water and butter, okay? And then you can season it however you want. So if you're making regular hollandaise, what I'll do now is you're gonna add some of this powder to it, okay? And, it, and there's directions on the thing. If you follow directions, follow directions always. Okay, I'll follow directions. <laughs> and this mixes up, this mixes up really easy. <laughs> Yeah, it's a French butter sauce, okay? So now if you're making regular hollandaise just for your, for your eggs, you know, you're doing eggs benedict, you're doing something like that, um, I would say put a squeeze of lemon into it, a little shot of cayenne. It tastes like you just made hollandaise from scratch, honestly. It's crazy. It's the only hollandaise dry mix I'll ever use, but why not alter it? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add some, some juice from some nectarines, okay? Kind of make an orange flavored hollandaise sauce. Butter and eggs go really good together, right? 
That's it. And now, yeah, anything can grow, you're right. And just a little bit of acidity to this really kicks up the flavor, okay? So, that's how easy it is to make hollandaise sauce. And what's gonna happen here, um, you can hold this if you want in a steam well, okay? You can hold it over to the next day. It works if you hold it over to the next day. So, very simple, easy, restaurant-friendly thing to do. And then food is art, right? So we gotta make it look good. So we're gonna take some grapes for this plate. I think of putting some nice grapes on the plate. Be a cool way to serve it. You can serve a little salad garnish if you want. Maybe some toast points right here. And then I'll put a little sauce on here. Right, kind of let it ooze over the edge. And then, how about a little edible orchid? Okay, and there we go. A very simple way for you to make quiche at your restaurant. Um, give your Cisco sales consultant a, sale, a call today and let's get you and try, you guys trying some of this product. So today for this next dish, we are going to do something for fall that I think you will like. It'll be easy for you to do for your restaurant. Uh, and it also lends itself to a carving station. But before we get to that, I am here today with a live audience at Huntington High School. Yeah! Right. Good deal. And one of our lovely students here at the art class, tell us your name. Hi, my name's Chloe, cool. and um, I'm an APR, and my APR portfolio is on Foods in America. And I like it. This art piece that I created is a cereal bowl. Um, I made it out of plaster, expander foam, a little paint, and this, the Froot Loops are made out of wiki sticks. Wiki sticks? Okay, very interesting. So they're also learning how to use different uh, mediums. So yeah, let's show the camera. All right, different mediums and, and how to, to make art really pop, right? Um, what are some other things that you guys really work on here and, and maybe it's something new that you're starting to learn this year? Um. Eh, can't think of it? <laughs> okay, um, and you're an AP art, correct? Okay, so you have to do a whole portfolio and, and you have to work on it all year long to be able to submit it, correct? All right, so that seems like a lot of work. So I'm sure it's kind of challenging, right? Good deal, we wish you the best on that. So let's get started. We're gonna cook a fall dish for a restaurant and I think uh, this restaurant, whoever chooses to do this is gonna be really successful. So we have a really cool product back here. So this is beef tenderloin. And so beef tenderloin, otherwise known as filet mignon, right? Mm -hmm. Mmm, I heard some mmm out there. That's right. Is, uh, you know, one of the pieces of meat that, that people are really, uh, really crave, but it's very expensive, okay? So we have a company that works with us uh, that has this product that comes pre sous vide, and it's great for a carving station. It's already very, very tender, and it's pre cooked, and it's pre cooked to the rare state, and then you can just warm it up. You can slice it on a carving station or do individual plates, which we're going to do today. But this is really an awesome product and the price point is right. So get with your Cisco sales consultant today so you can look at uh, pricing out this dish. Make sure you ask him about what is Cisco Studio? You know, Cisco Studio is a way for you to cost out your whole entire menu uh, dish by dish so you know how much profit you are making in each and every particular dish. It also allows you to uh, tag recipe notes and upload a picture of what that dish should look like if you wanna do something uh, for your kitchen staff that uh, allows them to have a book to go through and it makes training a lot easier, all right? So alongside of that today, I have this. So this is a roasted sweet potato, root vegetable, and kale blend. 
This stuff is awesome and it's pre-seasoned, okay? So if you don't have the staff that kind of does it right and you really want some consistency, this product comes frozen and all you have to do is warm it up and it's already seasoned, okay? So it makes things really easy. It'd be a great, great for fall if you're doing that beef stew or something like that. So this is kind of a spin on a beef stew. The other product we use today is Demi Gloss. So I'm not sure if you're aware of what Demi Gloss is. It is, uh, comes from one of the five mother sauces, sauce espanol. You take sauce espanol and you take uh, beef stock and you go 50-50 with them and you reduce it by half. That is what's called Demi Gloss. We sell Demi Gloss pre-made, okay? The best one, Boneworks, comes in a big uh, bucket. What I do is when it comes in, I let it thaw out just enough where I can scoop it up and I put it in deli containers and you can throw it back in the freezer then you can use it as you need it. So you're not wasting anything. You're not digging in the freezer all the time. All right, so something to think about. It's kind of a extremely rich, rich, rich gravy, okay? So you can throw those veg that vegetable blend, throw that vegetable blend in the oven, okay? And heat it up. You could do it in a saute pan as well, it's super easy, um, and then I mean, it's already pre-seasoned, it's already got the flavor. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of this down. You got y'all can smell it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. This has some good good aroma to it. Alright, and then we're gonna take our beef tenderloin right here. Yes. And with this product, you'll get the head portion, you'll get some tail portion of it as well, okay? So then all you need to do is just slice. You know, this is super juicy, exactly what you want for beef. And of course, the tenderness is there. Cut whatever size that you want. This is also a very cool product to put on a salad and do like a steak salad, upgraded tenderloin um, salad. All right, so then you can just fan it out real pretty this on top again think of fall think of you know those new you know the new flavors that are coming out as, as far as fall fall flavors posing <laughs> very nice all right we can decorate we can give it a little bit of a little bit of color right so with art food is kind of an art we eat with our eyes right so we need we need to have that that color pop so next, of course, some baguettes, okay? Beautiful baguette. Uh, we have different choices available. This is from Tribeca Bakery. One of my favorites, they make some really authentic baguettes. And boy, you just throw this in the, in the oven just for five minutes or so. It's it nice and crispy and beautiful, but how about having some nice French baguette with a meal like this. We can't forget our sauce. All right, a nice demi-gloss. You just kind of drizzle over there, and that's going to tie in all that rich, rich, rich flavor together. And there you go. You have a beautiful fall dish. Uh, Restaurant worthy for sure. And that is your sous vide beef tenderloin with roasted root vegetables. All right, so I hope you enjoyed watching those videos here at Huntington High School. We had a great time with the students here today, kind of combining art with food um, but a lot of folks ask, okay, what do you do for Cisco? Do you cook all the food over there at Cisco? And the answer is no. Uh, what I do is I'm a culinary consultant. So if you have a restaurant um, and you're looking for some new menu ideas or you want to see certain products uh, that Cisco has to offer for your place, give your Cisco sales consultant a call. We would love to help you. You can book time with me in, in my kitchen over at Cisco in Longview, Texas and we can go through your menu and show you some new ideas and maybe brighten up brighten up your menu okay um, if you have any questions please get with your sales consultant and 
it'll put you right in touch with me. Um, I also have today with me a uh, sales consultant. So this is this is what they look like. No, they don't all look like this, but they're not all. <laughs> they can't all be that good looking, right? <laughs> um, but this is just some of the things that we have to offer, and we have a whole bunch of different tools and things, right? Yeah. So your job as a sales consultant. I mean, are you just out there like hard selling people and buy this, buy this, buy this? I mean, what? How, how do you how do you work it? That's pretty much it. No, I'm joking. Um, so as a sales consultant, we work really well with the um, with the customers. You know, we a lot of customers, a lot of businesses. We're we're one of their first stops. We walk into a business and kind of get to know the customer, get to know what they're selling, their kind of food, and and go from there as far as finding ways that we can help them better their business. Um, that being selling them food, helping them either redesign their menu, plan recipes, train staff in the front of the house or in the back of the house um, to the different items that Cisco offers. We also bring customers to specialists like Keith here who um, broaden their just their menu items. Maybe they're, they're looking for new appetizers. Maybe they're looking for a special. Um, it's back of the house training, things like that. A lot Absolutely. of back of the house training. Another thing we do, it's not just selling, you know, it's, it's a consultant. We're working together with the customer, not just pushing them a product in front of the customer and taking off. We're, we're there um, with the customer there, making sure their truck arrives correctly with the correct items and then making sure they know how to cook those items or prepare those items. Absolutely. And so we also have a whole bunch of other services. Like I mentioned, if you're watching the video, we have the whole Italian segment that we're uh, just launched. And uh, before we had Italian items, but we were not really, we didn't have the right items. So now we have the right items and we are taken off with it. And so if you, you know, need those Italian items, please let us know. We want to help you get those items in your hands. Um, the other thing, if you want to buy a walk-in cooler, you want to buy a bottle of cool spices, like you heard me talking about Spiceology, we have supplies on the fly. We also have European imports, right? So we are actually a hub for European Imports, which is another company underneath our umbrella. And that includes high-end chocolates. It includes uh, charcuterie items, uh, dessert items, baking items, pastries, awesome pastries, by the way. If you've never come to my kitchen and had some really, really good pastries, your coffee shop, you really need to. But uh, we have all those tools available. But profitability to me is one of the biggest things. So you know, when you're when you're a restaurant guy and you're in the in the thick of it, you're just busy and you're worrying about this guy didn't show up. Now I got to cover this and that table's dirty and this is going on, that's going on, and you start to lose sight of profitability. How can you help with a, a, a restaurant's profitability? So one of the things that that we have, um, one of the tools that St that Cisco has is is called uh, Cisco Studio, and that. Break, really breaks down the price of each plate. So you can really see the, the cost that goes into each plate. A lot of restaurants have kind of an idea, but not really a great control. So Cisco really helps with that. That's one thing that we do. I think that's um, one of the best things. And, and this program works really awesome, um, especially for you chefs out there as well, mm -hmm. because now the GM comes and goes, you know, you're selling all that. I, have, you know, I don't think we're making money on that. Well, you can pull it right up and you can update live pricing. <laughs> There's the bill. <laughs> We're almost done, I swear. And uh, <laughs> gotta go. Gotta go. Uh, it updates live pricing, so every time you open it, it and then you can see if you need to uh, change pricing, right? So figuring out how much to sell something for mm -hmm. is not a simple formula, you know. Yeah. A lot of folks are like, "Well, I just multiply it times three. I multiply it times four. That can have something to do with it, and, that, and that's okay, and a, a good place to start." but it doesn't uh, take into a factor what the market will bear. So uh, those are some things that, that you yourself would have uh, conversations with customers about. Yes. The Cisco Studio also allows you to make a recipe book. So you can upload a picture of your dish, for example. It'll have the profitability part on it. It'll have the ingredients on it, how much goes into it, and then you can switch to another tab. And on that tab, you can write how to make it. So a new employee comes in, you're like, hey, Joe, take this home, I want you to study it. And they can study it and get a good idea. It's also great for uh, servers. You know, servers, they don't really, they need to know these days um, what is in something, because you might have an allergy to wheat, yeah. and there's wheat in that, right? 
So it, it, it lists those ingredients and gives them a little bit better idea. Also, the picture thing really helps. And those pictures are good, and you should take pictures of your food so you can have consistency at your restaurant. This is the way this plate, the plate needs to look. So these are some of the conversations that we have with customers, trying to help them get to where they need to be. If you're not successful, we're not successful. And the only way that a food service company is successful is through volume. Um, so yes, we want to sell you everything possible <laughs> because we're working off of pennies, not uh, nickels and dimes. And I know uh, in restaurant world, the average a uh, restaurant owner only makes about 10 cents on a dollar and that's if they do everything right and something doesn't break. So <laughs> alongside of all these different things we've talked about, we also have Ecolab. So if you need a dishwasher, please don't buy a dishwasher, lease a dishwasher. If you buy a dishwasher for thousands of dollars and it breaks, you're fixing it. If you lease it for, it's like under 100 bucks a month. It's ridiculous cheap. You only buy the chemicals when you need them. 24 hour uh, phone line, you can call and get service uh, if you need service. So if something breaks, they fix it, okay? Um, and when health department comes in, they see Ecolab chemicals are being used, they are very happy with that. Um, not only do we have chemicals for dishwashing, but cleaning your table, sanitizing, uh, floor, uh, hood cleaning, fryer cleaning, all those different things, cleaning your grills, we have solutions and systems for that. So we are really a one-stop shop and we do that for convenience for our customers. So they can have one truck show up maybe two, three times a week and um, be successful and rock on. So I just wanted you guys to meet a sales consultant and see what they look like, <laughs> what their theories are, all right? They're not big scary trying to get in your face thing. All they're trying to do is really help you be successful. So that's it we really appreciate you being here and watching this video and if you stay to the end that's awesome please like and subscribe and what that allows you to do is especially if you hit the notification bell what that does is every time that i have a bright idea you'll be the first to know thank you and join us again on the artful chef bye también nosotros tenemos este consultantes de comida que hablen español. Por ejemplo, yo y hay otros que trabajan con nosotros en el East Texas. Y este, cualquier pregunta, cualquier cosa que necesiten, aquí estamos para ustedes. Que pasen buen día y muchas gracias.